Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am General Novel. This edition Stop Stories. New protocol measures announced in the national fight against COVID-19. More strides are being made in bridging the digital divide in the education sector as the special needs sector receives laptop devices and government reaffirms its commitment to keeping gasoline capped at the pumps. New protocol measures have been announced as government and the Ministry of Health continue to lead the national fight against COVID-19. We have some new protocols based on the recent numbers that the CMO has given us. So first of all, I want to indicate that all registered farmers and fisher folk are to be included in the essential list of activities. That means that they automatically, once they are registered, they automatically will be able to um, uh, operate uh, outside of the curfew hours, meaning ast after 7 o'clock at night or before 4 o'clock in the morning, if their business requires, they would be allowed to be out. Pardon, PM, so let's just back up a bit that an amendment to the curfew. So because we had it at 7 p.m. to 5 a.m., and as you've just indicated, the curfew will now be 7 p.m. to 4 a.m. Correct. And that makes allowances for our uh, registered farmers and fishers to go about their daily activities. It, it does, but it also, for those persons who like to exercise earlier in the morning, can do so. Um, but in addition to that, by uh, making them an essential list of activities, also allows them to operate within the um, curfew times. So the same thing that would have applied to your manufacturing sector and your emergency services, they also, because uh, farmers and, and, and fisher folk are producing food for this country. And so we do not want to disrupt their normal pattern of, of, of work. And I think that we would all recognize the important role that they pay. Uh, Faith-based organizations may now hold daily or regular religious ceremonies within the established protocols with the numbers determined by the square footage of the building in keeping with the COVID-19 response plan approved by the Ministry of Equity. So again, we're going away from where churches were going to be limited to 25 people, um, but based on the square footage of the, of the, of the church, they can operate. Um, Faith-based organizations may hold special religious rights including weddings and funerals with a maximum of 25 persons in attendance and that will also be the number that would be uh, limited when they actually go to the, the the graveyard site as well there'll be a suspension on the sale and disposal of or the continued suspension and on sale and disposal of intoxicating liquor be maintained until the 24th of february upon the lifting of the suspension no consumption of intoxicating liquor shall be permitted or on, on licensed premises during the period of 25th of February to the 16th of March. So even when the current suspension comes to an end on the 24th, the intention is, is that liquor will be available at the grocery stores, um, both big and small, but it will be on a grab-and-go basis. So we know in the rural areas that there are grocery stores that are also bars, persons will be able to purchase their liquor in those locations, but um, it will be on a grab-and-go basis. So we don't see persons um, congregating um, and those spots but that will be, be between the 24th to the 16th of March. Restaurants and other food establishments shall operate only with a takeaway service so uh, they will and that's within the curfew hours so any restaurant um, uh, or food establishment can continue to can be open and can um, uh, provide grab-and-go or delivery services but they have to be shut and, and, f and f follow the curfew hours. Commercial and business enterprises may be open for businesses and permitted to operate within the established protocols and minimal operation using blended approach. So it means many of the smaller shops and the vendors now will be allowed to go back and start their operations again um, and would have to operate within the hours of the curfew. So between four o'clock in the morning and seven o'clock in the evening, but Again, they're going to be required to follow the protocols of wearing your face mask all the time, ensuring that your customers are wearing their face mask at all times. Indoor and outdoor training and gym workouts be permitted within um, the established protocols and prohibition on contact and non-contact competitive sporting activities shall remain in place. So people are allowed to, to go out training, but we are still requiring um, 
any contact sports um, to be um, restricted. And these measures shall remain in effect from the 17th of February until the 16th of March. Meantime, over in Barbados, Prime Minister Honorable Mia Motley has announced an 11-day extension to the ongoing lockdown that maintains a strict 7 p.m. to 6 a.m. curfew. The difficult decisions are unfolding at a time when the country battles over 600 active COVID-19 cases. During an almost hour-long address, Honorable Motley explained the decision to extend the restricting measures until the last day of February was consistent with the best advice of her public health team. The only adjustment after February 17 is the decision to allow Minimarts to reopen from Monday to Friday. The extended lockdown will have a devastating impact on the Barbados economy, with a projected $150 million in losses over the four-week period. Prime Minister Motley has pointed to her government's highly touted capital works projects as a ray of hope in helping cushioning the blow. A key component in the national response to the pandemic is the rollout of a strategic vaccination program. On Wednesday, 17 February 2021, the Ministry of Health will begin that program with frontline workers and the most vulnerable. 3,000 doses of AstraZeneca vaccine arrived on island last week a contribution from the governments of Barbados and Dominica. Recognizing the urgent need to commence COVID-19 vaccination campaigns in the Eastern Caribbean, leaders continue to stand in solidarity during the pandemic by sharing the first vaccine doses that arrive in the region. More in this report. While awaiting an order of vaccines from the Indian government, St. Lucia thankfully accepted 3,000 doses from neighboring islands that received theirs first. The Commonwealth of Dominica donated 2,000 Oxford AstraZeneca doses and Barbados donated 1,000 in order for St. Lucia to move swiftly in vaccinating those at highest risk in its population. The two countries are the first in the region to have received consignments of the vaccine from India under the Vaccine Matri Initiative. On Sunday, February 7th, the government of India dispatched 100,000 doses to Barbados and 70,000 to Dominica. Within the week, the two islands received their consignments, allocated and shipped batches to their Caribbean neighbors, including St. Lucia. Dominica's Prime Minister, Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, during his weekly televised talk show, told why he paid it forward. It makes no sense if one country is fully vaccinated and the neighbors are not. Right. Um, and, and therefore, this, this period calls for um, multilateralism and it also calls for um, empathy and it calls for a spirit of sharing. Dominica also donated 5,000 doses each to St. Vincent and the Grenadines and Antigua and Barbuda from their India donation. Honorable Skerritt is thankful to the Asian nation for its swift and favorable response to his early request for vaccine support. He is also pleased to assist neighboring islands in beginning urgent vaccination campaigns against the COVID-19 virus. I don't think I could go to bed knowing that I have 70,000 doses of vaccines. Um, and not share with the rest of the world and right. as yeah. small as mm -hmm. what we gave them is or right. was. That is the fact. Um, mm -hmm. But it certainly can start the process. Mm -hmm. yes. These vaccination donations to St. Lucia will be used in the rollout of the first phase of vaccinations for 1,500 frontline workers, including medical personnel, state security, including the police, fire service, correctional officers, and paramedics. During the first parliamentary sitting for the year, when only Barbados's donation was confirmed, Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney announced Prime Minister Mia Motley's gesture to the Honorable House. She did that because she clearly understands the, 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 the stress we're all under, particularly with our frontliners. This is not to say like we're a huge metropolitan country and we have lots of other resources to make up for that. We know that when a police station goes down, everybody in the police station goes down with it. God forbid that we have um, any of our nurses affected significantly where it would cause us to have to close down one of our main hospitals. So I'm very grateful to her um, and the people of Barbados that have agreed to share these vaccines with us. 
Prime Minister Chastney also announced that 74,400 doses of the vaccine will arrive on Ireland before the end of February, procured through the COVAX facility. Honorable Chastney indicates that his government intends to purchase additional Oxford AstraZeneca doses from India and, like other OECS member states, awaits a direct donation from that country as well. Discussions are also ongoing for vaccines from the African Union. For the Government Information Service, I am Jesse Leons reporting. And the CARICOM Secretariat has also received a donation of 100 vaccines from the government of Barbados to vaccinate 50 employees. Secretary General Ambassador Erin Larock says it is not the first time that the islands have banded to address the difficulties of COVID-19. When we were in a, in a spot of trouble in March of last year, those countries who were able to get uh, PPEs and those countries who were able to get reagents and test kits were also able to share with others who were not. And I know that um, uh, Barbados is sharing uh, with many other countries. And similarly, Dominica. Dominica also received 70,000 doses and Dominica is sharing with some of the OECS countries. So I think this demonstrates the solidarity. Prime Minister Motley has said to me that our staff in, the, in Barbados, we do have an office in Barbados, um, will also be looked after, along with some of our very critical and important regional institutions that are located in Barbados. These are the frontline agencies. I'm talking about CDEMA, I'm talking about the RSS, I'm talking about IMPACTS, I'm talking about, of course, us here as Secretariat. I think persons don't understand the amount of coordination that's being done among these, these frontline institutions. CAFA, of course, is headquartered in Trinidad and Tobago, but I'm sure some arrangements will be made because CAFA is doing human service in conducting tests on behalf of um, member states. And I should mention the University of West Indies as well. They're doing, doing tests along with CAFA uh, to, to try to detect what types of strain is in our region. So it's a whole effort by the community and its institutions to fight and respond to the COVID. Ambassador Larock is encouraging Caribbean nationals to participate in the vaccination programs in their respective territories in order to restore normalcy to the region. I've taken the vaccine, I feel fine. I encourage persons to make themselves available. This is the ultimate fight to get us to um, herd immunity, what is referred to as herd immunity, so that we can get on with our normal lives. At the same time, we have to continue to be cautious and be safe and wear a mask and follow all the advice that the health personnel are giving in the intervening period. I will continue to wear my mask and to keep my social distance and to wash my hands and to express all the, or to do all the necessary hygiene acts, actions that we're supposed to do. Um, until we know that we're out of the woods. And I do encourage everybody to do the same. Secretary General of CARICOM Ambassador Erin Larocque. More strides are being made in bridging the digital divide in the education sector as COVID-19 changes the manner of instruction. The Education Quality Improvement Project Equip St. Lucia has provided some 30 laptop devices to visually impaired students and special education teachers on the island. Project coordinator Marie Grace Ogis says the devices were financed by grant funding from the Caribbean Development Bank. 16 will go to students, special education needs students, and 14 will go to teachers. Now, you probably be wondering, well, why there was this delay? Because of this COVID-19 pandemic, we have to recognize that even in the supply chain of our laptops, it was a little glitch because the suppliers, the overseas suppliers, could not get the parts that they required to put into the laptops. But at least they're here, they're fully delivered. Chief Education Officer Dr. Fiona Philip Meyer says the devices are designed not just to assist in the learning process, but open new and dynamic opportunities to the students. The software is going to help turn text into voice so much so that we know that it's not only about Braille, which is a very important skill to learn, but with the advent of the internet, students are able to actually look at the text with the software that they have and get the voice for it. So that is really, really a powerful thing to be able to access so much more. So let me congratulate the team. Let me thank them on behalf 
of all of us educators for empowering our students, investing in our students' improvement, and ensuring that their skills are even further. Education Officer for Special Education, Dale Sergis, lauded central government's commitment to revolutionizing education for the special needs subsector. Many of our special schools have already set up their online platforms for the learning of their students. One area of deficit for many of them is the availability of devices for the teachers. We have done a very careful examination of the situation, an assessment of the needs, and these devices are going to persons who have needs. And we know that the laptops will be used in the service of the education of our students. So we are very grateful for, for this opportunity. I also want to say that this handover Although it is coming within the, the COVID period, it is not strictly COVID assistance. I think I can correctly say that EQUIP has always had it in mind to provide high quality educational resources to support the special needs community. That has always been part of the, the thinking behind EQUIP and that includes making available assistive devices for persons with special needs, providing training for teachers, providing support for the parents of children with special needs. And this is one of the components of that improvement in education for the special needs sector. The handing over ceremony was held Monday, February 15, 2021 at the EQUIP conference room at Goodlands. Hester St. Clair, teacher at the Donata School, received on behalf of special needs teachers and Mia Randolph, a special needs student of the Castries Comprehensive Secondary School, received on behalf of benefiting students. Minister for Commerce, Industry, Investment, Enterprise Development and Consumer Affairs, Honorable Bradley Felix, noting the most recent adjustment in the prices of petroleum products on Ireland, is providing clarity to the public as it relates to government's pricing mechanism. The modified market pass through petroleum pricing mechanism in February 2015 was changed to a three-week period with a view of allowing government to respond to the fuel price adjustments as they played out on the world market. I want to give a comparison at our last pass-through mechanism compared to this pass-through mechanism going forward. At our last pass-through mechanism that was in place, the London price and I want to speak specifically to gasoline, which is where the increase is currently. Gasoline was landed at $6.20, and in this period, it's landed at $6.69, a difference of $0.49. Cents. Government has in place excise tax of $4, which is added on to this figure. Out of that $4, we are very familiar that one fifty is committed to our road rehabilitation, road improvement project. There is a service charge of 6%, which is calculated on the landed cost. And at our last period, that service charge of 6% amounted to 37 cents. And this period, the service charge is 40 cents. So 49 cents, the difference in the landed price and the service charge, we now at a total of 52 cents. The company margin starts at $8.01, and that accounts for individuals bringing in fuel. And the retail margin starts at $1.10, which accounts for individuals selling fuel. None of the aforementioned margins change. The minister explained that the increase in costs, such as the increase in CIF and the service charge, account for the $0.53 cent increase. Minister Honorable Felix indicated, however, that in many instances, the government continues to absorb some of the cost to consumers. Regarding the LPG, the 20 pound and 22 pound cylinders, where we see another adjustment, um, had government passed on the increase, customers would have been paying an increase of 96 cents. Government decided to further subsidize this by 48 cents, and 53 cents respectively and therefore it brings a total of the subsidy now towards the 20 pound and the 22 pound at seven dollars and 86 cents and eight dollars and 
$88.65 respectively. This means we estimate that government will be giving up revenue of about $400,000 in subsidies towards the LPG 20 and 22 pound um, cylinders. Government is expected over the next three-week peri three period to um, make about $3.6 million in excise tax revenue. $3.6 million. We make a comparison to last year, February. Um, government had estimated that we would have made about $4.25 million. So you could recognize the difference between last year and this year in terms of the estimates and in terms of the revenue that government is making. Comparing the price of fuel in member states of the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union, the minister reaffirmed the government's commitment to keeping gasoline capped at $13.95 per gallon. The funds amassed by the government over the three-week pass-through petroleum pricing mechanism is expected to contribute to government expenditure. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquiole. It's hair, the bio-intelligence bio-button, an innovation to the Ministry of Health's approach in battling COVID-19. The bio-button is a state-of-the-art device. It supports people keeping regular checks of signs of possible COVID-19 infection while placed in home quarantine. It monitors temperature, heart rate, and respiratory rate. It is very simple. Just link it to your smartphone and place the button on your chest. It's that easy. The bio button costs only 100 US for the 14 day period. For further information, please contact the Epidemiology Unit at 468 5325 or 468 5324. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Monsieur, Madame, Department qui n'est responsabilité pour information au gouvernement cette ci à ce GIS, à son épée télévision nationale PIA NTN, qu'a posé ton nouvelle à Creole, posé ton Primus Hutchinson. Travail déjà commencé officiellement pour bâtir projet pont en col de sac. Ça qu'a fait à bas conduite ministère de travaux et qu'a fait bâtissement. Projet déjà trouvé financé par le gouvernement Japon en façon de un support pour cette ci en hauteur de 37 millions de dollars en effort pour l'occasionner transformation pour ce salaire. Le projet a aidé pour renforcer les grands bâtiments en pays et en même du temps qu'à entretenir l'activité économique à cette ci à un temps qu'on a présent côté la terre a presque tombé en faillite. La première phase, le projet a commencé et puis travail pour bâtir un petit chemin pour faciliter la transformation de la construction de ce projet. La compagnie courant de cette ci le Soleil aussi, a commencé à replacer pour tout courant à des façade de chemin pour faire le travail de la plus facile. Le projet pour le col de sac de la fini il a réduit la situation de l'eau et a stabilisé le degré de transportation comme le projet de la qui est plus grand et aussi plus long. À part de ça, le point de la supposé renforcer le développement économique et social et pour faire le grand chemin de la plus résilience pour des désastre naturel. Le département des affaires, le bâtiment et le travaux, qui a fait le monde public avec toutes les citoyens de ceci, a fait un la construction de la construction de la construction de la construction, qui a fait un dégoût les Grecs internationaux et le département qui est toujours présent devant la construction de la construction à ce projet pour ça là. La caïni en cérémonie tout de suite pour marcher officiellement. Commencement projet là et un commitment cet ci pour relation diplomatique et puis pays Japon pour si tellement longtemps. Gouvernement cet ci a remercié l'agence des coopérations internationales de Japon pour continuer à supporter cet ci à divers projets comme ça. Gouvernement cet ci a continué pour prendre des marches pour aider à soulager la situation économique pays, principalement les citoyens qui sont plus brisés. Pour ce que le Premier ministre de l'Honorable Alain Chasnet a établi une motion en Kaikonsit mardi semaine passée pour chercher façon 
pour le membre parlement approuver changement en législation qui a gouverné pour les marchandises qui a tout en cette liste. Par exemple, article de manger, rad, joujou, avec l'autre nécessité qui méritait pour la famille servie à Kaye. Les gens qui ont aussi voulu se barrer ça, ont trouvé un bon soulagement de paiement. L'initiative a commencé depuis le 1er en mois de février l'année ici et a été le 31 en mois de mars l'année ici aussi. Le Premier ministre Chasné a expliqué que le gouvernement, j'ai une direction qui peut être point en situation économique et comme la situation a été très plus difficile, il a été très nécessaire pour porter des gros supports et secours pour les gens qui sont plus nébrisés en pays. Le Premier ministre a cru aussi que la situation a été improuvée en pays de l'Amérique, côté majorité de ces barres qui sont sortis, c'est le sien qui a reçu plus de ces barres qui de la famille qui habite en Amérique. Même public, c'est le sien qui a trouvé une notification qui la saison pour pêcher ou ma a fermé le 1er mois de mars pour le 1er mois de mars pour l'année 2021. Du moment où il y a un compte là pour personne pêcher ni ni en possession et bien pour vendre ou ma. En bas, la loi qui a gouverné à faire la pêche, qui a montré que personne n'a supposé pêcher, et bien tirer à l'eau la main, et bien en pièce, les, ni en possession, et bien qui exposé pour vendre, et bien qui acheté Houma, devant la saison pour pêcher Houma fermé. saison pour pêcher Houma a fermé tous les années pour aider la population de Houma Sala pour profiter et pour faire une contribution pour entretenir une mère vive et pour ne pas détruire euh, détruit ces roues là ça c'est du bon temps qui a produit plus haut. C'est loi qui a protégé euh, pour les roues tout est nécessaire pour faire assurer que la population de les continue pour servir de la façon de manger et pour plus important pour les pêcher et pour faire bon profit pour les revendeurs de pression et les restaurants. Les roues c'est une bonne nourriture pour le public là, généralement, par conséquence de ça, le public là, les pêcheurs, les revendeurs et les établissements de restaurants qui a obéi à ces règles, qui a obéi à ces règles, qui a protégé les Roumains, qui a placé la population en risque. Alors, si les gens qui ne suivent ces règles, ça a été une cause pour les autorités longées à ce temps qui s'est joué à l'ouest et fermé. Les autorités qui avaient des petits publics, généralement, en particulier les consommateurs, pour ne pas acheter les Roumains, commencer le 1er mois de mars 2021 pour 1er août 2021, parce que ça c'est la saison à fermer. N'importe qui qui a trouvé qu'à casser la loi pour protection, conservation, ou ma, ça a trouvé condamné 5 000 dollars. Et si vous savez, les gens qui sont coupables de ça, vous avez fait un rapport pour la police marine, pour le garde qui est plus pauvre, et bien le département de la pêche. Vous avez fait contact avec le département, en numéro 468. 4135 Merci à Pill Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.